Hey gang, thanks for checking out this episode of Images Reimagined. This is where I review images that were submitted by photographers like you and give constructive feedback through my eyes and experience. This week's photo comes to us from Chad King in Dallas, Texas. Be sure to stay tuned until the very end for a look at how I reimagined this image. Chad posted this portrait of a beautiful young girl in my Facebook group. He explained that this was a natural light shot with no additional lights or modifiers. He also explained that he had made the shot after walking from a well-lit area where he had been shooting into a shaded area and he had forgot to adjust his exposure. Find me a photographer that hasn't made that mistake more than once and I'll show you someone who owns a camera but never uses it. I mean, come on, we've all been there. Chad also shares the following technical details. The camera was a Canon 5D Mark III with an 85mm f1.2 lens. The shutter speed was 1 800th of a second, shooting at a wide open aperture of f1.2 and the ISO 160. Chad did his post-processing in Photoshop. We have a nice, simple portrait of a beautiful young woman. This is the kind of shot that frequently catches me off guard. At first glance, I love it. As the clock ticks on, I find myself bothered by several things. As I explore the image more, the colors feel muted and somewhat muddy. You all know I'm a big fan of color, so I'm struggling with the color in this shot. This girl has gorgeous blue eyes, but I would definitely love to see more pop from them. Now the turned down collar on camera right, it's sloppy and could have easily been fixed. Remember, it's all about the details and of course, the messy hair is another one of my pet peeves. So if we open up the raw file that Chad submitted, we have a very underexposed file that, as Chad warned us, is the result of moving from a bright area to a darker shaded area and not changing the exposure. Fortunately, it's a raw file, and believe it or not, there's enough information here to work with. I always preach that auto is a four-letter word, and you shouldn't use four-letter words. However, here's a little habit that I have in my post-production routine that includes auto on every single image. Every time I open a RAW file in the camera RAW portion of Photoshop, you can do this in Lightroom as well, I select auto white balance just to see what happens. Every so often, I get a result that I hadn't imagined, and I like it, or I can make a simple adjustment from that point to get a color balance that I really like. Remember that these kind of images don't require exact color balance. It is a very subjective choice. Now in this case, auto makes very little difference, so no harm, no foul. Then I select auto on the exposure portion of the camera raw tools. Same reason. Every now and then, I get a result that I had not expected, or in the case of this image, I get a huge improvement in the overall appearance of the image. As always, I'll still fine tune brightness, contrast, highlight shadows, etc. Then as I do with most of my images, I'm going to set my clarity to about five, boost the vibrance to about 25, and add about four on saturation. Then I'll sharpen the image to about 50 and remove chromatic aberration and enable the profile corrections for the lens. I'll switch over to the hue, saturation, and luminance panel and boost the blue eyes and shirt and bring the reds down just a smidge and then also give a boost to the greens and yellows that are in the background. Now that I have the image in Photoshop, I'm going to duplicate my background layer and use the liquify tool to try and minimize the sloppiness of the collar on the right. I'm also going to reshape this fold on camera left to make it a little less distracting by shaping it to the breast. Now while I'm working with the liquify tool, since I have the option of reimagining this image, I'm going to make a few other tweaks. Now if this were being delivered to the client as a portrait, it would be wise to make sure the client is okay with these tweaks. And if it's to be used for a modeling portfolio, these additional liquify tweaks would be completely unacceptable. First, I'm going to eliminate this little bump in her nose. Then using the new face aware liquify tools, I'm going to enlarge her eyes and separate them just a bit. I'll thin her nose ever so slightly and plump both lips and make the mouth just a little wider. The last tweak will be to give her just a tiny bit of a smile by turning the corners of the mouth up slightly. Next, I'll add a new layer and label it Retouch Layer. 
I have an action set up to do this, so I only need to hit my F3 key. On this layer, I'll use the healing brush to clean up any blemishes, and a combination of the healing brush and clone stamp to clean up the messy hair on the camera left side of her forehead. I'll also use both tools to clean up the bloodshot lines in her left eye. Next, I want to pull a little of the red and yellow out of the right side of her face. This is a color cast that is coming from the red brick on camera left. I'm going to select the area that I want to correct, pull out a little red and yellow, and then blur that selection about 15 pixels. Now I'm going to add a 50% gray layer, and using a white brush, I'm going to start to lighten the eyes and the teeth. Notice I said start. I'll be doing more later. Now for the hair. We have a lot of flyaways. Now if I take them out completely, it's almost assured that it will look like I cut her out with scissors. So instead, I just want to minimize the sloppiness. So first, I'm going to select all, and then select copy merged. Now command or control V to paste. It's worth mentioning the noise that you're seeing in the dark areas of the background. That is the result of trying to salvage an extremely underexposed file. But if we stick with the same crop that Chad had for the final shot, we can get away with it. You'll see in a minute. Now using the pen tool, I'm going to draw around the subject, creating a clean outside line on her hair and body. Next I'll select Make Selection, then select the inverse, Modify, Feather by 3, and then Control or Command D to get rid of the background. Now that I have my subject on a separate layer, I'll go down one layer and using a combination of the healing tool and clone stamp, I'm going to tone down the stray hairs fairly aggressively. When I'm done with that, I'll go back to the top layer and use the liquify tool to smooth out the shape of her hair in spots where I might have been a bit angular with my pen strokes. Now back down a layer, I'll lower the opacity of this layer slightly, and things are starting to look a little more natural with a little less craziness in the hair. A few of the hairs will still need some work with a healing brush. A few finishing touches include adding some contrast and brightness to the eyes, and dodging the teeth a little bit using a 50% gray layer. Finally, I'm going to use the ImageNomic Portraiture plugin to reduce that last bit of orange in my subject's face, and to bump the contrast just a tad. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go with the same crop that Chad had used on his version. And there you have it. My version of this image reimagined. A little lighter, a little more colorful, you decide. Of course, it's always better to start with a properly exposed file, but sometimes you just have to make your mistakes work. Remember, I'm not saying that my image is better or correct. It is my vision of this image. You may have a different opinion. If you do, please share it in the comments section below. Remember, stay constructive. You can say you don't like something, but offer a solution or an alternative. I've also included a link to Chad's website with more of his images in the description section below. I hope you find this helpful. If you'd like to have your image reimagined, please follow the link below. Your image could be my next video. So until next time, remember, yeah, your best shot it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.